Welcome everybody. It's um, 6.15 on a rainy night and um, I'm going to um, verify that we have posted the agenda in three public places at least yeah. and on the website and interested parties have been emailed so we have uh, <clears throat> warned the public that we're meeting here tonight so here we go. Does anyone have any agendas to the additions? <laughs> you know what I was going to say. Martha. You did it on I don't know if this is the right time or not, but the next meeting you have listed here is Monday, December 23rd, which is the night before the night before Christmas when the big thing is going on. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, it, it, I, mean, I won't be able to be here, and I can get the minutes from her later, but I just wondered if it was possible that that would be a conflict for others, and maybe you could have it the 30th, the following Monday. <laughs> but who knows? And it's a thought. Okay. And did I see your hand up there, Harlan? You did. Yeah. What would you like to add? Uh, the missing books. Sorry. Thirty years of Rochester's okay. greatest history. Okay. So um, we'll start off with the minutes from the no November twenty-fifth meeting, which I found mm -hmm. do a good job of yep. communicating what we did. So I move to approve. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Put those out of there. <clears throat> and um, Vic, you want to talk about the um, uh, requesting an approval for Rochester to participate in a multi-town working communities challenge grant. I do. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you first of all a little bit what this is about. This is a grant fund that was created by the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston to support economic development in New England. It's been it's, it's six or seven years old, I think process. They've been working primarily in more urbanized areas in Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island, and have a lot of case studies. I'll give you three real quick examples in a minute what they're covering. Um, and now they're starting to uh, fund programs uh, in Vermont. Uh, and so within the state of Vermont, uh, about two dozen towns have been identified as potential recipients of the grant. Those that are 6,000 or more in population are eligible themselves, those that are less than 6,000 population in their specific town, not every town under 6,000, has been identified as a hub town. And they need to get enough adjacent towns or nearby towns to go in with them on a grant application uh, to make up 6,000 or more people. So in our area, Randolph is a designated hub town. And um, so all the surrounding towns, Brookfield, uh, uh, Braintree, Bethel, Chelsea, uh, and Rochester uh, are invited to participate. And in fact, uh, I've, I and others from these other towns have been working with uh, 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 Jesse Jerome, who's the Economic Development Director for the Town of Randolph, to put this thing together. Uh, I'm, I'm representing the Vision Rochester in this process. So. Uh, the grant program in, uh, is two stages. There's the first stage is a planning stage. It's a six-month grant for up to fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Begins this January, and that is to uh, go through a more intensive planning process for implementation. If you're successful in getting a planning grant, then you're eligible to get an implementation grant. The implementation grant covers three years, starting next summer and the award is $100,000 for each of those three years. And what this is all about is funding uh, cross uh, organizational and cross town uh, collaboration in uh, addressing ways to improve economic economics of the involved communities, particularly those issues that affect low income residents of the area. So, uh, it's looking at you know, potentially things like housing and transportation and job uh, creation, job eligibility, um, legal issues uh, uh, that uh, by working together among several organizations and towns to try to come up with creative ways to um, improve the economic well-being of the citizens of the area. And let me give you just a couple of examples of grants that have been uh, awarded and projects that have come out of those from uh, the other states. So these are three examples from the state of Massachusetts. So in Chelsea, no, in Lawrenceburg, Lawrence, Massachusetts, the Lawrence Working Families Initiative is a two-generation effort that coalesces regional employers, service providers, and public school system 
to transform the local workforce supports for parents of students, uh, connecting over 200 individuals to higher paying jobs, introducing nearly 650 families to wraparound services to help their children thrive. Here's one from Holyoke, Massachusetts, the SPARC, it's an acronym, SPARC initiative in Holyoke developed a data-driven ecosystem for jump-starting and accelerating a pipeline of Latino-owned businesses in the city, with its initial effort supporting 70 entrepreneurs who established 33 new ventures and 82 new jobs filled primarily by Latino and women residents. And then the third one is uh, from Chelsea, Massachusetts. The Chelsea Thrives is the name of their initiative. The team created an evidence-based cross-sector crime prevention effort to identify and serve families with acute risk of crime, resulting in a successful pilot with over 205 families receiving intervention. The effort saw crime figures decrease in the target neighborhood and at the city level. So it's just to give you a flavor of what this is about. So uh, it involves, in, in our case, it would involve Rochester working with all these other towns, plus uh, a number of organizations who have signed on as partners to like Gifford Hospital, um, the, um, uh, Capstone Community Action Center, uh, Clare Market Center, um, Bar Harbor Bank and Trust, um, all uh, a number of others. Brookfield Community Partnership, Central Vermont Adult Basic Education, and then there's a number of other organizations that we're still pursuing more. Uh, so we think by um, cross-collaboration among these community service organizations and employers and the towns, uh, we can come up with some ways of addressing uh, needs of low-income people in the area in particular. And the, the way we intend to go about this in the planning uh, grant, if we're successful, is to involve uh, potential beneficiaries of the program in the planning process. In other words, we know there's housing problems, we know there's transportation problems, but all the data is at a high level. So what we're looking to do is get on the ground experience and input from people who could be affected by this. You know, what's their lived experience? How would reshaping some of these things uh, be beneficial to them? And use that as information to inform the implementation grant which will come in the summer. Also, during the, the planning period, um, the core team of this uh, collaboration uh, would be invited to participate in several uh, all-day workshops uh, to get better educated and about the process and how to go about it and how to uh, collect and analyze data and learn from other uh, towns that have done these kinds of things uh, elsewhere in New England. And so uh, so what, the, what the Federal Reserve Bank of uh, Boston is trying to do is you know, um, make this uh, the opportunity for success as, as strong as possible. The odds are not terrific for our getting just by the numbers. As I said, there's about two dozen towns that are eligible. There's only six grants are going to be awarded for the planning phase. And of the six awardees, uh, they're only going to award two or three uh, <coughs> um, implementation grants. So, you know, the numbers are not in anybody's favor. Uh, but uh, we want to we make the effort and do the best job we can. It's competitive. Um, we would, uh, a couple of us would go to a, uh, have to be interviewed. There'll be a jury in January who will interview all the teams. And, uh, you know, like an, like an art fair, we have to be jury. So anyway, so that's, um, that's what that's about. And um, I have a, a uh, uh, resolution that uh, we drafted, we're going to take them to all the select boards uh, to review for signature. We, mm -hmm. Our application deadline is this Friday, mm -hmm. so that's why so we're here. So whip it out, let's see it. Yep. Yeah. At what uh, point do we know um, whether we're contenders or not? Well, uh, end of January, uh, they'll award the final, they'll award the uh, planning grant by end of January. So okay. we have to get our application this week. They'll review all the applications from you know, whatever towns submit. And uh, then those that submit will be invited to you know, make a presentation to their That's when we know committee. we made the cut. Yeah. 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 Well, no, that's when, that's everybody who is applies, I think, gets that. Oh, OK. But then they'll consider that plus the written application and then make a decision at the end mm -hmm. of January. So this is um, something that they will be signing, right? Okay. Yeah, if we agree to. If you agree to. Okay. Right. Excuse me. I'll let these guys. Um, 
for And your your role here is like our representative and Vision Rochester yes. from the town of Rochester. Yeah. Do you need other uh, townspeople or? Um, uh, Catherine Shankman has been working with me on this. Okay, good, good. And uh, she and I went to uh, the initial meeting and we both got very excited about what we saw and heard and uh, she's away uh, this month so uh, I'm carrying on without her this month but she'll be back in January. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so you're, you're and, and I'll look to get other, I'll look to get other people involved as well mm -hmm. as, as we define the project uh, as we go and if we get awarded then I'll be looking for other people to get involved primarily as um, advisors or consultants so, you know I'd love to have somebody from the school district I've talked with Ethan Bowen a bit about it but I haven't had enough sort of concrete meat to give to him to, and he's been very busy you know with his play recently and so forth so another organization would like to get involved too but you know we get to first base first and see if we get an award yeah, I, I think it's definitely worth um, supporting this, and I would, when you guys are done. Let's give it a shot. Look at it, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. So is it, is this the kind of grant that the town would have to match something no. with? No, no. This is totally yeah. Federal Reserve of Boston. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, and there's some yeah, other there's nothing in here about foundations involved, but there's no there's no financial uh, obligation on the part of the yeah, town. We have to match it with some energy. Match it with some energy and enthusiasm. Right. And that's what Vic is here right. representing, <laughs> the spearhead of energy. Yes. And yes. you see the same enthusiasm from the other towns I do. dedicated to this. I do. Good. In fact, uh, we were just talking about <coughs> Miley and Lindley, the two owners of the Arnold Flock Bill. They're very right. much involved and very excited about this. Uh, Rebecca Stone has done a lot of work with them. The town manager from uh, Randolph said that his boss, the uh, town manager, has, uh, no, he's a town economic developer. His boss is the town manager, said this is a high priority for the town of Randolph. Okay, okay. And I've met uh, people from uh, other towns. And we're trying to get other other towns involved as well, even after the application is submitted. So, you know, I'd love to see Hancock and Granville and uh, Stockbridge involved as well. But I have a question for you, Vic. Yeah. Do you know of any other towns that are that have uh, reached conclusions on any of these things as examples of what they actually accomplished? Well, that's, I, what, I, that's what I read to you, those three examples. This is the first time out in Vermont, so it hasn't been done before. So okay, but I know you had talked about um, uh, low-income housing and things of that nature, yeah. and transportation, yeah. stuff like that. Is, are those the kind of things we're, we're referring to here as, yeah. as, as potential outcomes? Um, those are areas of those are in within those areas. There are barriers to people achieving economic success. They can't afford the housing. They don't have a car. Uh, they have a prison record. They have uh, health issues. Um, and so, how can we work with existing um, organizations and agencies to find ways to help people? You know, I don't know what the answer is that. And so this period of the planning grant is to figure out what are some ways we could do that. But the concept has been pretty well established in these other cities in New England. Um, and the, the Fed feels confident enough about it to expand it now into rural areas. And we're the first, this is the first go around. These communities that you read are known to be low socioeconomic yeah communities a yeah. and a lot of immigrant yes, correct. communities. Correct. Um, so if they've had some success there. Yeah, liter there are literacy issues and cultural um, barriers exactly. and language barriers. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, you know, it's interesting that those were the ones that were yeah, I mean, there are many picked more. out. There are <laughs> yeah. plenty uh, more. I just picked those off the website. There are plenty yeah. of others you could talk about. Well, that's part of what the planning process would be about is trying to identify some realistic goals and projects. That's that, right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, to involve low-income people in the planning process. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, there's real participation in that one. That's, that's our aim. So I, I move to um, pledge the town's support in this endeavor. I'll second it. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you for your information and your... Uh, if you, could, oh, yep, yep. if you would all sign yeah, off on right one, now. I can bring it yeah. I can take it with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will uh, 
scan these into the application on Friday. But it's also something for you to envision mm -hmm. with these different communities that have proximity to each other. Yeah. If none of us should be fortunate to get it, just start working on the same basics ourselves, yeah. how we can accomplish this. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so um, Joan is not here tonight. She had a rehearsal, but um, I have a printed report from what she's been working on, so I'll just um, read that off. We've got <clears throat> the final TATRO reimbursement request has been submitted to VTRANS for approval and payment, which is on the Bethel Mountain Road project. So, um, it's sorry. included in tonight's warrant. The amount is $534,371.71. Get that, Martha? Uh, so the final TATRO reimbursement request for the been submitted. Work. Excuse me? Has been submitted to VTRANS. Okay, yeah. for, uh, submitted to, to VTRANS. It was $534,000. 371 and 71 cents. 71 cents, all right. Well, sorry, I'm not going to So the um, Tetro's total contract amount after numerous change orders added up to $2,067,000, $877.71. Oh, so total contract for the entire? The entire Bethel Mountain Road rebuild. So the entire. But That's Tatro. That's Tatro. That doesn't include Hutchins. 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 Yeah, so the total Tatro contract. Tatro contract. Thank you. Yeah, pretty lucky that Storm took that road out. So 55 cents on the end of that one, right? I was writing yes, that. Yes, right? yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make sure I get it right. <laughs> All right, and then when Dubois and King submits their final invoice, which is due at the end of this month, Joan will be ready to submit a reimbursement request to be trans for the town's direct expenses for Site 1, 1, B, and 2. And the total so far before the DNK final bill is close to $600,000. Most of that is Dubois and King engineering fees. So when Dubois, well, Dubois and King, or Dubois and King, sorry, if you want, I can just um, give you this sheet if you want. If to. you wouldn't mind. Sure. I'm sorry that I didn't want, sure. I didn't want to interrupt right. you, but yeah. I want to make sure I get it correct. Yeah. And Dubois and King has submitted all final documents and plans. And the FEMA paperwork is continuing and will continue for a while. Mm -hmm. And she's going to submit the Better Roads application um, for grant this week. So thank you, Joan. That, yeah, that's Martha. Tony, have you got anything exciting to share with us tonight? Well, sort of. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, we have uh, a couple of dates that the library will be closed. It will be closed uh, the 24th and 25th for Christmas, of course, and the 31st and 1st uh, because of New Year's. So those won't be there. Uh, they uh, there's a knitting program going on that'll be the 19th and there is a cooking thing uh, with someone from uh, I think uh, the uh, Well, I want to say the cafe. It's not. Uh, oh, the bakery, maybe. The bakery. That's yeah, Sandy's doing something. Sandy's yeah. going to do this. They're going to be making uh, bobkas, which are Jewish cakes that are filled with various uh, things. I guess they can be quite different, and that'll be on the 17th from 10:30 to 11:30. And 
the drop-in program for computers is continuing, and that'll be uh, on the 12th from 2 to 4. I guess if you have a computer program, a problem, you can just go over and this person will tell you about oh, that's how to fix it. Yeah, just yeah that's been happening, yeah. yeah. That's it, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, thank you. So we're in terms of the um, budget process and the ongoing um, quest for the perfect budget. We're um, we're hoping to invite um, Yola and the librarian on the 17th of December meeting and um, for the budget and finance committee meeting. I, I'll reach out to Yola, but I figured yeah. I'd mention that to you also. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that that, uh, we didn't know that that was even going to happen because we are on a different line in the budget, so. Yeah, but still a different Correct. line, but still but a But we want to be line. in the know because the bottom line affects our tax rates. And oh, so of course. We yeah. want to yeah. still yeah. want to be in the And that's on the 17th, you said? Yes. So yeah. it's the library trustees and the town budget and finance committee. Okay. Yeah, a lot of things happening on the 17th, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The whole month is busy. And that's at 3 o'clock, right? Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Thank you. But like I said, I'll reach out to Yola, but if you can. You know. Okay. We we'll have a trustees meeting tomorrow, so I'll right. mention that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I guess the um, cooter is probably out working. Standing. Sanding, yeah, we're pretty lucky. We it's missed a lot of the possible freezing rain. It's just been raining, but, but still a mess. And Terry's not here. We've gone down to um, in our new business. We've got an engagement letter from Nathan Holly, the CPA, who's been working on the town audits, and um, he's been doing this for a few years for us now, and. Um, Doing a good job, so I'd move that we engage him again. Move forward. All favor? Aye. 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 This is to do the fiscal year 20 audit, right? Yes. Yeah. We're providing the number that we're going to put in our next budget. Also, in the um, this came up in some of the budget meetings, but the um, we started to realize um, a small bit of income from the sheriff's department um, in terms of issuing tickets. And there are currently two four-hour shifts per week, and um, there's been a. a thought that perhaps that income should be invested in hiring them for a third shift in the week. Um, do you have some numbers that you want to share about that? For July, August, and September, the amount of money that um, was deposited to our account in fines mm -hmm. that come back to the town is $2,536 for the first three months that they worked for us. Um, the month of October was $1,193, so um, we think that we have enough income there to sustain another four-hour shift, um, and if we have another four-hour shift, these numbers will actually go up as well. So what were the actual costs? For that same period? It's about 2000 a month, is that what it is? About yeah. two th just over $2,000 per month. Month, so yes. you're up thousand. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so um, working off of the budget from the previous these shifts year. Are like he doesn't have like just a shift. You know. A no, they're they're random. They're, okay. they're randomized. Yeah. 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 Even we don't know when they're showing up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, huh. they, they will show up for specific events if we request right. it, like on the 4th of right. July or what have you. But in the first four yeah. months that we have had the sheriffs in town, we have equaled 
the amount that we collected in fines for all of the previous year. So, so it's they are being effective. Important to point out that this we don't hire them to do that as a way of making money, <laughs> but they're the money that they are making. It seems like it makes sense to fold it in, and that um, you know some people have been concerned that we had slightly less coverage because of the hours, but eight. this would be a step towards um, equalizing that. So I, I think people like the visibility mm -hmm. yeah. of their being around. They were yeah. catching people on Main Street about a week ago because I saw those blue lights three times in one evening. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, um, I think that's a good idea and I, I move to go ahead and engage them for a, a third shift. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is this to be effective January 1st? January 1st. January 1st, yeah. And who's going to let them know? Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll make my, me a new contract or an amendment to it. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. All right. And then we've also had. Um, um, kind of concurrent with this transition from the constable to the sheriff, we have um, our animal control and constable position has um, gone vacant, and um, that's something that we need to but have by statute. The constable, even though it would not be a law enforcement constable, it would just be in in title, and we have. Um, have I know of one person interested in it? I think that's why we have such low attendance tonight. Because <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to be, <laughs> nobody wanted to be tagged. <laughs> they saw that on the schedule. <laughs> um, is that should we just put that out as in the public meeting that we are soliciting anyone interested in, in taking that position and before we um, give it to get, get in touch with so, us yeah. or. Yeah. It correct to say that you know of one person who shall remain nameless who's interested and the board is hoping other people will apply. express apply or we're just given interest. options not that we yeah, have it's any. an appointed position yeah. so and there's a job description yeah here it's not much of one it's yeah. but it's not much of a job it's not much of a yes. job <laughs> not much to pay either <laughs> no. not much to pay either yeah. So in name only. <laughs> so that would be something that we would hope to to um, appoint, um, you know, mm -hmm. early by the end of this year, early next year, say, yeah. Christmas present. Someone could have a new job. <laughs> Arlen? In consideration of, uh, you know, dog problems in the past, maybe, you know, let's beef up the job description a little bit or empower somebody you know what I'm saying not you say that's not much of a position well in well it, and reference to what's gone on in recent years it would seem like it would be good to have a position where you know somebody going to say something and get something done yeah. just saying I think we're referring well, more to the constable position the animal position is is definitely a, a serious issue mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's what I'm talking about going on yeah I'm not sure what what um does that seem to have escalated in your, your perception of the animal issues oh, I've just been you know I've listened to the people coming in with problems with other people's dogs and, hmm. you know the animal control officer doesn't seem to have much bite or nobody seems to have much bite actually yeah, well, pun intended yeah. <laughs> all right well Thank you. Next on the agenda, we've got the um, um, proposed approval of the economic proposal study from SE Group for the Vellamont grant. This is um, something that the town of Rochester has spearheaded on behalf of um, the Rochester, Granville, and Hancock, um, and the application of a um, uh, um, for a grant to study and develop the, um, the Bellamont Trail. And then I was part of a 
three per no four person group that studied the proposals from six different engineering companies in terms of their uh, um, how they would go ahead. This is for the economic um, impact that it would be. It's not for a physical construction and the uh, SE group out of Burlington um, was a unanimous choice from all four people evaluating their proposals and so I would um, I would propose to formalize that um, approval for that the proposal. So this is just a study? This is a study and this is so it all takes required studies. Effect of and then an economic in impact study. Uh, uh, I I just to go on to a shovel no. on the ground. No, it's, it's yeah. all just a, a economic impact study. Yeah. And this is paid for by Belmont. Um, this is no, this is a, a grant. It's not um, there's there's they want a grant to pay for. It's not paid for by the town. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So the grant was then required a, um, a soliciting for, for proposals, which then were evaluated. Mm -hmm. And from, came a lot of them came from far away, like people in Maryland and stuff. It's interesting. But um, these people are, are pretty local and know what's going on. And so I, I'd move to um, approve that, um, that proposal from the SE group for the Bellamont grant. I'll second that. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we'll see if they had. Did um, she give you something formal that she wanted signed for that? Well, okay. Well, we can. Um, we've uh, officially approved it. So if we get something in writing, we can sign that. But, um, and we got um, the issue of the next meeting, which is on the night before the night before Christmas, which is also the night that there is the night before the night before Christmas. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people to go to that. I yeah. mean, admittedly, I'm just asking because it wouldn't work. No, this is this came up before too, and so okay. what what do you guys thought on that? Do you have tickets for the night before the night before <laughs> Christmas yet? Right. What time does it start? I didn't because I thought I I'd believe, have a select board meeting. I oh. believe it starts at 7. I mean, I, the posters are around here. Well, so you have to get in there before. Yeah. But Sorry. yeah, it, it gets really crowded, and the theme mm -hmm. this year is home. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's gotten really popular. And last year, in particular, was, um, the theme was immigration, and people really enjoyed that. Um, mm -hmm. It was really. No, it's a good event. There's no question yeah. about that. Yeah. So I don't know. I, it's just a thought. But the night before the, before the New Year's Eve, I don't know if that would be <laughs> well for anybody else. Christmas Eve. On the, no, no, I meant on the 30th. It. You sort of need to be in a position to sign bills. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, and especially right before the um, before the end, end of the year. End of the year. Okay, okay, so the 30th so wouldn't work then. Like, so, but well, maybe no, earlier in the day on the 23rd. I'll be at work. We are putting the paper together that day. So. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, if I can't, if, if you can't do it when I can be there, I can get the notes from. You can always watch it on Orca Media too. You go. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think about uh, um, uh, moving it to five o'clock on that day? Would that work? That's with? fine by me. Fine with yeah. me. Uh, I still won't be able to get there because the rehearsal will be start early. It's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all right. You can. Um, you can we'll give you the notes and and like i said you can you know if you can't sleep in the middle of the night just dial up the pal website oh she won't have them ready it. the next day she told me it takes a couple of days okay. uh, see i might not even be here either oh you might not even be here either so you're going to depend on our media this time <laughs> yeah. A baby. Okay, so um, you, you yeah, let's do instead of um, pushing it on till the thirtieth. I think that it's, so you're going to do it the December twenty third at five. Twenty third at five p.m. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to count on you, dear. <laughs> and it will be basically, most likely, we'll be just doing your bills and. Yeah. Right. I don't think we have anything that would. We're not expecting anything major to be on the agenda. All right. Yeah, that's a good point. In Harlan, have you had anything else to report on the search for this book? I was hoping you had some. No, no. Nothing. No. Does anybody? If I did, I would have put it on the agenda. You mentioned the yeah. last time. Nancy, I was going to ask you, who who do I contact to try to get access to American Legion? I mean, no, yeah, she is. You can get it. 
We have a key. Do we have a key? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wasn't. I wasn't yeah. sure. Okay. okay. Don't expect much. I don't. Yeah. So nothing. But you know, yeah. honestly, I'd like to just check the condition of the space, anyways. So, mm -hmm. at the same time, I think it'd be a good idea. They've been doing it for a lot of years. I know. In in less than adequate space. I know. Does the Legion still meet down there? I haven't seen them. Well, well, probably not. I think Tommy Simpson is not well. And no, I think it went beyond Tommy. I don't know. Tommy's up. What's wrong? Not doing good, huh? Oh. Um, I think they were here, was it last summer they had a meeting? There were people from other towns that came. Who's who's the uh, American Legion? I think Jeff Brown may be the one who's in charge yeah. at the moment. Yeah, I was going to say, he's the one I contact for, for when they do the um, barbecue at, with, for Fourth of July. Right. Yeah. Oh, but I right think he's that. he's probably the most likely person to okay. comment on they things. They should at least know that we're in there and why we're in there. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. He might be willing to, to come down and help you or something. Mm. You know? Well, right now he can't. Oh. He's not in any condition to do that. Jeff? Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. So I think that's it, unless anyone else has something else to talk about. Um, how much uh, How much are we up to with the lawsuit? We haven't got a number on that one. I hear it. 54 55. 55 G? Yeah. We did just get a, another bill for nineteen hundred and seven dollars. Yep, fifty-five, five eighty-seven, and twenty-nine cents. It's kind of disgusting, isn't it? But uh, that's where it is. Just keep grinning. Yep. Yep. We only know for sure. That's like four or five cents on the tax rate. Mm -hmm. The whole library yep. budget. Yep. At this point. Um, could have solved this way back. All right, well, thank you. Good night. Thank you.